Here we are at Farley's office. One cannot say that ethics play a very large role in his life. Look at the headlines pinned to the walls, like trophies of bad taste. Perhaps we will finally begin to understand the reasons for his persistence in tarnishing your reputation. Perhaps. This is an electric box. Interesting. Coffee! It's still hot. A press card. Osmond Farley. It's his overcoat. Cigarettes, an ordinary, inexpensive brand. I cannot leave now. This door is locked. Is Farley afraid of being interrupted suddenly? I must go out for a while, Miss Jean. I won't be long. Ask my appointments to wait and send this message as a matter of urgency. Mr. Osmond Farley, I presume? Messrs. Holmes and Watson. What a surprise. What is there so surprising about being visited by the targets of your slander? I never slander. I inform. You will have to accept the consequences of these articles, Mr. Farley. Those words sound like a threat, Mr. Holmes. I never threaten. I merely warn. You don't frighten me, Mr. Holmes. I know all of your little secrets. And soon all of London will find out what really hides behind the facade of the impeccable detective. Thanks to my work, the whole world will discover the true Sherlock Holmes. Gentlemen, I don't wish you a good day. What a bore! Even to the point of refusing to shake our hands. Which means that we can avoid having to wash them. Did you notice the crumbs on his jacket? He had just finished eating and his hands will be covered in grease, the same as his mouth. Slovenly habits. That's quite disgusting, Holmes. Do not be deceived, Watson. The workmanship in those tailor-made clothes indicate that he is a man who takes pride in his appearance. If Farley has left without brushing off his jacket or washing his hands, then it is because he spotted our approach and wished to avoid us at all costs. But why? We will find out by searching his office. The secretary will stop you. Please reassure me, Holmes, you don't intend upon knocking her out? Only if we exhaust every other viable alternative. The secretary is occupied in sending a telegram via their electric telegraph. Farley asked that she should do so before he left. We must find a way of interrupting the transmission, which will oblige her to go to the telegraph office in Kensington. It will take her some time to get there, and if we add on the time it takes to send the telegram and then return here, we should have ample time to search the office without being disturbed. I suppose it's unnecessary to point out the illegality of this search? I'm afraid so. This is an electric box. Interesting. I need a tool to remove the lid. Closed. I need a tool. This hanger has a large iron hook. This is an electric box. Interesting. I need a tool to remove the lid. I can hear an electrical humming. The secretary is using the electricity supplied by this switch. Let us see if I can cause a short circuit.
There we are. It is simplicity itself. Oh, that's just too bad. Get out quickly, Watson. I'm going to hide here. The way is clear. A makeup case with a good brush. I can make out the marks, but I need something to bring them to light. I must look more. I must look. make out the marks. A page of this notebook has been torn out. We can only see the title in shorthand and today's date. It's a message that the secretary must send urgently. I'm going to recopy it. You can read shorthand? You never cease to amaze me. Were you a secretary before becoming the great Sher? Perhaps, perhaps. But no, a man must have his secrets. The ribbon is missing from this machine. I can make out the marks, but I need something I can make. The secretary has just changed the typewriter ribbon. There are smudges of dark blue ink. Here is Farley's secretary's telegram. Nothing special here. This paper only just escaped the flames. But who is this note about? And who wrote it? I will deal with it later. Someone closed the curtain as though he wanted to maintain his privacy. This cabinet has a lot of drawers, each marked with a letter. There is surely a great deal of information in them. But we can't open all of them. We must know what we are looking for. A bunch of keys, a telephone, a technological marvel. A number was written next to it quite recently. A fine, educated hand. Holmes, this number seems very familiar. Yes, but let us dial it to be sure. Miss, get me 1313, please. It is Scotland Yard, of course. I'm beginning to understand. Lucky you. This book has fallen down from the shelf. The Adventures of Sh Holmes. My word, it's my stories about your investigations. A real investigative reporter must have read them, my dear Watson. The Adventures
this ashtray is worth examining. This ash comes from an ordinary, well-known brand of cigarettes. It is still warm. This cigar is of a fine quality. It must be very expensive and difficult to obtain. And it is not even finished. What a waste. Our man left his sandwich unfinished. This ashtray... The cigar end is still hot. Farley was not alone when we arrived at his secretary's office. You are thinking of the owner of the cigar. Yes, the reporter smokes ordinary cigarettes. Can you smell the subtle scent of gingerbread? That is the characteristic odor of a Habano Clarissimo. Our mysterious visitor is a rich man, Watson. This category of Havanas is exorbitant, and I cannot imagine a cigar lover crushing out such a marvelous smoke before finishing it. Since we saw no one leaving the building, that must point to a secret exit somewhere. How are we going to find it? by retracing Farley's steps from the moment before we arrived. Look, this room is teeming with clues.
This armchair is out of place. Judging from all the notes on the board, our reporter is an assiduous and organized worker. Here's what is strange, an attack of collective insanity. A photograph of Prince Woodville. Farley is evidently also interested in this affair. Horrible story, and rather a strange one. My adventures have fallen from this shelf. I understand what you want to do. It's an old trick. I can see what has been written. Please write it down. Very well, Holmes. I wonder which drawer the secretary was interested in. The DF drawer, of course, the one in the message that we deciphered from the secretary's desk blotter. There are a lot of cards. How to find the right one? I can't do that. No. I can't. I can't. No. 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 I can't. I can't.
there are a lot of cards. How to find the right one? I can't do... No. I can't... No. I can't... I can't... I can't... I can't... No. No. These blue stains come from an old typewriter ribbon. This card has been removed recently. This card has got grease marks on it. The reporter made them. Apparently, he's making inquiries about Prince Woodville, too. But where do you come into all this? Look, if we pull the curtain a little, we can see out into the street.
The key is still in the lock. Farley consulted a card while he ate, which was given to him by his secretary just before she changed the ribbon on her typewriter. The reporter's greasy fingerprints are all over the card. When he went to file it away, he glanced automatically out of the window and saw us in the street. He closed the filing cabinet and rushed to lock his office door. In his haste, he pushed his chair aside, but didn't think to return it to its place. Precisely. He then hurried to tell his visitor of our arrival and showed him the way out. He then threw a piece of paper into the fireplace. But we still don't know how the cigar-smoking visitor departed. The answer lies in the direction the reporter took, Watson. At a certain moment, he would have been in a place where he had no logical reason to be. Look at our deduction board, and then let us go to the place where the reporter should not be. Someone close. My adventure.
Here is Farley's. Someone called. Our man. This book is the ad a my adventure. This armchair is out of place. Someone called. Someone. Cl the ribbon is. This arm. Look at our deduction board, and then let us go to the place where... Look at our... The key... Coffee! My advent, my adv this arm, this arm, arm, someone close, someone.
Amen. Here is Farley's secretary. The secretary has just changed the typewriter ribbon. There are smudges of dark blue ink. I cannot... Someone called Scotland Yard not long ago. Um, this arm. Perhaps not perfect. Yes, Watson. In his haste, Farley dropped this book, taking it from the shelf. Let's search this place. There's a control... We don't know the combination, Holmes. The answer is perhaps within the question, my dear fellow. That's not right. That's not... That's not right. That's not right. That's not There's a control box. We don't know the combination, Holmes. The answer is perhaps within the question, my dear fellow.
That's not right. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Let us go and look at this secret exit, Watson. Chance has smiled upon us, Watson. This hat was almost certainly abandoned by our mysterious visitor. Imagine the scene. In his hurry, the cigar man drops his top hat. The door closes. The hat is caught beneath it. Fearing above all that he should be discovered, he does not attempt to retrieve it, instead preferring to flee. Who would take such action to avoid meeting us? I cannot tell as yet, but it is certain that he carries the advantage of knowing us. We must discover his identity in order to redress the balance, and this hat will help us. Let us return to Baker Street. Let's hope that an examination of this top hat will reveal to us the identity of its owner. It will, you can be sure of that. For once, I must insist that you allow me to work alone, Holmes. As you wish. Take your time. I will examine this hat at my work table. I will examine... This hat is of an exceptional quality. The man who owned it is wealthy. His hair is graying, and judging by the odor, he puts camphor on it. He is probably in his early 50s. This hat was made to measure by a well-known hatter located near the Old Bailey. Heat marks and a strong smell of tobacco. A cigar smoker, which confirms that this hat belongs to the reporter's visitor. Slight scratch marks. Slight scratch marks. The man wears glasses, and whenever he puts them on, he grazes the sides of his hat. This would suggest that he is educated and long-sighted, rather than short-sighted. Someone has changed the ribbon for another, more modern one, which shows a certain taste for current fashions. Not a mistress, but someone who pays attention to details. This man is married. I now have an excellent description of the man that I am looking for. The journalist's mysterious visitor is in a profession highly placed on the social scale. He is rich and married. He must have called Scotland Yard in Farley's presence. He frequents the law courts from which he makes his purchases. This man is a judge. Let us look through my files to see if I can identify this judge. I have a memoir on the most influential judges. I have found my file. I must place it on my work table.
Right. It is him, Judge Beckett. Have you discovered the top hat secrets, Holmes? Watson, this hat belongs to Sir Coots Beckett, a judge of the court at the Palace of Justice in London. A judge? Wait, did you say Sir Beckett? That name rings a bell. Um, yes, that's it. What an extraordinary coincidence. Holmes, I was reading something about him in the Globe Explorer only this morning. Decidedly, this Beckett seems to have solid ties with the gutter press. I bought it from a rascal who ran off without giving me my change. <laughs> I'm sure that I've seen him before, and... Spare me the details, Watson. Show me the article. So, Lady Beckett is on holiday in Portsmouth. That means her husband is at home alone. Good. We shall pay a courtesy call, Watson. With a little luck, we shall leave with a few Habanos Clarissimo. That you should interest a judge of the High Court isn't surprising. You have solved so many criminal affairs that there are a thousand reasons why a magistrate should be interested in you. But why should this one feel the need to act in shadows? It's true that it's surprising. Perhaps he simply wishes to avoid being seen in the company of this Farley fellow. Mr. Kirby, our local postman, owes me a favour. He'll give me Beckett's address. At this hour, he should still be at the post office. I'll go there, Holmes. Good, Watson, but be quick about it. While you're gone, I'll make preparations for our visit. Sir Coots Beckett. I've got the address. We can go round after a nice cup of tea. Don't get too comfortable, Watson. We're leaving immediately. This is the front of Judge Beckett's property. It's enormous. It looks very luxurious, Holmes. This man has conducted his career brilliantly. Who says that crime doesn't pay? It all depends upon for whom. You never said a truer word, Watson. Now let's try to find a way in. What's that package you are carrying, Holmes? You haven't said a word about it all the way here. Cakes for my old aunt. <laughs> Your old aunt? Stop pulling my leg, Holmes. If you want a sensible answer, then you should ask a sensible question. Very well. I'm going to ring the doorbell. That should be an appropriate task for someone like me. No, leave it. I'll do it. No reply. The house seems empty. Shall we wait, Holmes? No. We shall enter discreetly. The judge's absence is a blessing. It means that we can investigate without being disturbed. You're thinking of breaking into the judge's house? Have you gone mad, Holmes? Don't worry. I shall be careful to remove any traces of our visit. Listen to yourself, Holmes. You're talking like a common criminal. Closed. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. How nice to see you again. Do you remember me? Of course, Miss Lucy. How could anyone forget so pretty a smile? You are looking lovely. Watson, we have things to do. Holmes, you remember Lucy? We met her during our last investigation in Whitechapel, on the trail of Jack the Ripper. I remember only the essential details of the case. This brief meeting has been very pleasant, but sadly, I must leave you, my dear Lucy. I'll see you soon, Doctor. Another bank that has gone bankrupt. If this carries on, the whole country will be ruined.
This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. I need a supple pin, Watson. Can you find me one? Very well, Holmes. Ah, oh, Lucy, you have no idea how heartlifting it is to meet you here like this, particularly at this time. Tell me, what you've been doing? You've become a florist. Oh yes, Doctor, I am a florist. And I'm married now with beautiful little twin girls. Congratulations, Lucy. Enough about me. Can I help you with something? A pretty bouquet, perhaps? Not at the moment, Lucy. I really need a supple metal stem. A plant prop should do. Oh, I see. Is it to open a door or a window? Aha, Lucy, you are a surprising lady. Let's just say that the lock on the door to my flat gets stuck and I should like to get in through the window. In that case, a prop wouldn't work. Better to use a hair grip. It's the ideal tool for an honest man who wants to get into his house without going in through the door. You are wonderful, Lucy. Goodbye, Doctor. I need a supple pin, Watson. Can you find me one? Very well, Holmes. That's not right. That's not right. That's not... Good, we can pass. Here's the kitchen. There's enough room to feed a dozen people in here. Yes, according to the newspaper, the judge's wife also feeds her pupils, in addition to teaching them. Cooking oil. There is something interesting here. An ore lock. This isn't the place for it. This classroom is magnificent. These children are very lucky. Can you hear that small metallic sound? There is something inside there. I am missing some inf- I am mi There is- I am missing- This is a photo of the judge and his wife. This photograph was taken on Judge Beckett's wedding day.
This woman is admirable. As she was unable to have children of her own, she decided to care for hundreds of others. This screw is stuck. It is preventing the picture from turning. The blackboard shows the last lesson given to the children, ancient Greek. This screw is stuck. It is preventing the picture from turning. This screw.
perfect. An ore lock. The door handle has been removed. The door handle... One of the Greek books is open. Perhaps the subject of the last lesson. It's a sweet box, probably for rewarding good pupils. Everything points to someone who does not wish us to open this cabinet, which is a good enough reason for opening it. The door ha The door Please take note, Watson. We are making headway. How do we know what this means? This room is undoubtedly the judge's office. It is double locked. It would be better not to force this door, nor break a window. Judge Beckett could return at any moment. You're right, but he surely must have left a spare with somebody he trusts, of course. There is no point in visiting the upper floors. We know from the newspapers that this building is deserted, so there is no risk of anyone coming down and surprising us. There are naughty children in every school, from what I can see. This overall belongs to the young James. Sweet papers fallen from a pupil's overall pocket. Well, the young James has stolen the handle to the sweet cupboard so that he can pilfer it whenever he likes. If we find his desk, we will find the handle. It's a plan of the classroom. Thanks to this plan, we will know which desk belongs to James.
All right, let's open James's desk. It's a plan of the classroom. It's a plan of the classroom. Perfect. The door. It's a A book about student organizations in the United States of America. The most romantic evening of my life in the heat of Bombay. This photograph was taken on Judge Beckett's wedding day. Big Ben. The judge got married in London and early in the morning as it is just 10 a.m. The clock Perfect. There we are. It is simplicity itself. A key. We are in the judge's private office, Holmes. What are you going to do? Turn everything upside down? That is a distinct possibility. I will not leave until I have found what I am looking for. Don't forget your cakes when we leave, Holmes. Of course, Watson. A Habano Clorissimo cigar. Nothing of interest here.
This gentleman certainly likes oars, to the point of exhibiting them in his office. This note must surely be very important to Judge Beckett. The list of symbols of the American universities. I am missing these 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 I can make out a mechanism. I am missing some I am miss I am miss I am miss nothing but trophies the judge must be very proud of them this door is very solid and there's no lock the best thing to do is to carry on exploring this place Holmes Watson this really is the most ingenious system it controls the opening mechanism very ingenious but do we need to enter judge Beckett is very rich and the room perhaps only holds valuable objects which he wishes to protect from thieves doors are made to be opened my dear fellow a souvenir from the University of New York that's the university where judge Beckett studied An ore lock. It must be a souvenir. Beckett, honorary member. This must be the symbol of an organization to which the judge belongs. Look at this symbol. It must surely be very important to Judge Beckett. The young Beckett and his friends, rowing. The judge used to row. I am missing I am I am The list of symbols of the American universities This note must surely be very important to A Greek letter. This note must surely be very important to the list of symbols of the American universities. The list of symbols of the American universities. A Greek I am missing the list of symbols of the American universities. 
I am Miss. I am. I am. I am. Blind justice. From whence his ignorance? Amusing. Desire to cook. I am Miss. This note must surely be very important to Judge Beckett. I am Miss. Blind. Greek letters. Copy them down, dear fellow. Very well, Holmes. The list of this note must a Greek.
agree. I am. I am. The list of symbols of the American universities. Well done, Holmes. Incredible. Masses and masses of files. Holmes, these files, these cards, these reports, they're all about you. So it would seem. Your whole career is mapped out here, investigation by investigation. Look. A detailed report about your work in Whitechapel during the Ripper affair. And there, your relationship with a certain A. Lupin. And here, the details of your methods and transcriptions of your conversations with the greatest violent criminals. My God, look at the titles of the files. Fraud, deception, corruption, forgery, murder. What does it all mean? Quiet. Let me concentrate. Concentrate? This judge has the reputation of being the most honest in the kingdom, and he has built an overwhelming pile of documents as high as Big Ben about you, and you talk of concentration? To open his chest to what end? Quiet. Holmes, answer me. What is the real reason for our being here? Did you know what we were going to find before we came here? Evidently. So that is the real reason behind this break-in. You're only interested in the contents of the chest. All the rest of it was nothing more than lies and manipulation. The most important is the one in the chest, Watson.
There, I have what I came for. Show me the file, Holmes. It is unnecessary, Watson. It's a file about you, isn't it? Is it so compromising that you don't dare show it to me? You came here to steal the research about you carried out by Judge Beckett, Holmes. It was the only thing that interested you. We'll see about that later. We must put everything back in its place. No one must know that we've been here. Help me. Go and put the paddles back into their original position and I'll deal with the rest. But that's the plan of my flat. I mean, our flat. Quick, Watson, we must get out of this house. Immediately. What? But... Be quick, man, it's urgent. Because of you, we have to flee like common criminals, which it seems we have now become. I only hope that the game is worth the risk. Show me the file right now. Let's find a cab as quickly as possible. We can't stay here. Why are you in such a hurry? You... Wait! Look over there! Judge Beckett! Yes, it's him! Let's go and talk to him! It's too late. Do as you wish, Holmes, but I need to hear an explanation about what was in that armoured room. I'm going. No, stay here. That's an order. Your giving orders changes nothing. I'm going to talk to Judge Beckett and you will not stop me. Watson, Watson, are you all right? My God, what happened? Lucy, oh Lucy, poor girl, I must do something. Holmes, I need your help here. Forgive me, Watson, but I'm afraid that I must leave now. Leave? What the devil do you mean? Holmes, come back here! Holmes! Holmes, are you here? Show yourself! No one. Perhaps it is just as well. I don't know what my reaction to him would have been. How dreadful. That poor Miss Lucy hanging between life and death. Luckily, I was able to place her in good hands. But how the devil did Holmes know that a bomb was about to go off? And what's more, he seems to have taken advantage of the tragedy. No more Judge Beckett, no more compromising documents, no more proof. There is nothing at all. The harpoon that was used to kill Black Peter. A horrible murder. Locked. Locked. The paper Holmes used to wrap that mysterious package that he left at the judge's house just a few minutes before the explosion. Kurtz's pipe. So Holmes took it with him. I wonder if he would have fired at those fiends in the opium den. A few days ago, such doubts would never have crossed my mind. But today, I find myself asking if he could have killed in cold blood. Aha! Toby, who knows where Holmes is? How dreadful! A fountain pen, just like the rat killers. Today, that dangerous maniac is free. And what's more, it is Holmes's fault. That inquiry at Westgate was a total failure. These events have shattered my nerves. I should sleep for a few hours, or at least I should try. Locked. I was poisoned. By who? Uh, 
Ah, you know him very well. <clears throat> Such a clever man. A brilliant mind, but so evil. He has hurt so many of us. Who are you talking about? Who? So hot. Flames! The heat is unbearable! Walter, I beg you! Where is he, the devil? One day he will have to answer to a higher power. Oh, I need air! I need water! Ease my pain! Who did this to you? Ah! Ah! Dr. Watson! Is that Lucy? Lucy, you are wounded! I can't find my children, Doctor. Find them for me. But I beg you, keep them away from Mr. Home. Lucy, no. Why do you say that? Let me help you. You are so kind. It is too late for me, but you can still say it. Holmes, I know you were in there. Holmes, open this door immediately. I think that I would rather not. Tell me the truth, Holmes. I need to know. You have no right to keep the truth from me. Tell me! I am sorry, Watson. Open this door, or I will break it down! Do what you like. The door is not locked. What are you doing? No! Holmes! No, it is impossible. What's going on? Police! Yes, yes just one moment, I'm coming. Dr. Watson, is Mr. Holmes here? Inspector Baines, what? Is he here or not? Uh, no, I do not believe so. Open the door, quickly. You're gonna have to come with me, Doctor. We have a lot of questions to ask you about your relationship with Sherlock Holmes, and also regarding your movements early yesterday evening. It's empty, Inspector. Get dressed. We're leaving in two minutes. Yes, I'm coming. I'll do all I can to help you. I would also like to find the answers to some of my own questions. Sergeant, I'd like you to stay here with some of your men and search the place from top to bottom. If there is one clue here that will lead me to him, then I want you to find it. Doctor, you must understand that I am sorry about this situation, but if, as we believe, Holmes is a murderer, I won't hesitate to arrest him. What did you say? A murderer? You heard me, Doctor. The Bishop's murderers informed us that they were following orders from Sherlock Holmes. Baines and his men have ransacked the place during my interrogation at Scotland Yard. I would never have imagined that I should be put through such an ordeal. I have always fought on the side of justice, but to be interrogated for hours like a common criminal, having to proclaim my innocence over and over again. Baines is convinced that Holmes is guilty, but who can blame him? Everything seems to point to him. I had thought that the worst was behind me, but here I am as a suspected accomplice. All I need to do is to find Holmes, and when I find him, I'll... I'll decide. I'm going to search the flat. Perhaps Baines overlooked some clues. This disguise evidently belongs to Holmes. This disguise evidently belongs to Holmes. This disguise evidently belongs to Holmes. This... There's no point... Baines's men have more or less spared my bedroom. How kind of them. Here is where I write my stories about Holmes's cases. And I've got work to do. Ugh, 
What a smell! It reeks of tobacco. This did. This bust was used to fool Colonel Moran during the case of the empty house. This disguise evidently belongs. This disguise. This. This is what Holmes was wearing yesterday. Holmes has left his tweed suit here. So, he came back to change after he left me in front of Judge Beckett's house, just after the explosion. Knowing that Scotland Yard is looking for him, he will likely have changed into one of his disguises. I just need to know which one. The best thing to do is proceed by elimination. I will use the wardrobe in the sitting room to reconstruct them. Holmes's tobacco. A hole. There must be a false bottom. I need something thin to prise it up. A hole. A photo of Irene Adler. The woman, according to Holmes. A letter addressed to Zachariah Dossett, the clergyman. But what is that doing here? It's a rent reminder. But why should Holmes be concerned about that? Another letter. This one for a certain escort. Who could that be? This J. Escott must be a worker in the building. A letter addressed to a clerk of the court. Why in heaven's name has Holmes got that? This letter is addressed to a naval captain. My goodness! All these carefully hidden envelopes were addressed to Holmes under various identities. The addresses are therefore those of his hiding places. Holmes has never told me about them. I suppose that he goes there regularly and discreetly to pick up his mail. I cannot waste precious time by going to each of these addresses. I must refine my research. Holmes's Victoria Cross. I must collect. I must. I must collect all the people.
I must come. I must put the right name to the right disguise. I must put the... There, the end.
there. Perfect. Now I know what Holmes looks like, and I know where to search for him. Let me take a look at the map. It would be better if I took some money before leaving. One can buy a lot of things with notes in Whitechapel. Here is where... Uh, my... my money! Someone has emptied my wallet! I always keep a little money in it. The police can't have stolen it. It's impossible. Last night I was too tired to think, but now I have to face the truth. Holmes stole my money, like any common low-down scoundrel. Good. I've got the address of Holmes's hideout. Six bucks row. Well, here it is. It looks like a boarding house. I can't knock on all the doors. Holmes will hear me and escape. As I've the advantage of surprise, I'd better use it. Oh, but I know you. You with the moustache. I met you back when Jack was cutting up all those girls around here. So you've come back to do some slumming. Danny, you are no longer, um... Uh, I mean, you've given up the, uh... The game? Yes, my dear, I've given it up. Sorry, are you? I'm the manager of this boarding house now. I rent out rooms. Uh, that is exactly why I am here. I'm looking for someone who... He's not here. You don't even know who I'm talking about. Perhaps not, but he's not here anyway. You should understand that my tenants come here for peace and quiet. Quiet and discreet, my hotel is. Just like me. And I, Danny the Anvil, 11 times champion of male wrestling in Whitechapel, I guarantee their peace and quiet. I really must insist. It's very important. Mrs. Anvil, I work for the government in the hygiene department, and your establishment... Tough luck, ducky. I make my own law here. I warn you, if you don't let me in, I will come back with the police. Think about it. You're a grass as well. Cross this door and I'll knock your head off. Then we'll see whose side you're on. Madam, I have found you at last. I'm one of your greatest admirers. Are you having me on or what? You are so very unique. I would like you to permit me to sketch your portrait. My port? Portrait? What for? It's always a good idea to have a portrait of oneself. Um, to show your friends. Uh... You're right. I'm lovely, aren't I? Come on. I'll do your portrait too. Ah, oh, whatever. But I don't think your friends will recognise you afterwards.
You know that I'm a doctor, and that is why I'm here. I'm looking for one of your tenants, a workman. He's suffering from a rare form of tooth loss syndrome, an illness he contracted from the lead steam in the factory where he works. Tooth? What's it? Tooth loss syndrome. A very rare pathology. A path of what? Uh, well, an illness that weakens the gums and causes the teeth to fall out. And you're here to put his teeth back in? No, of course not. Uh, may I come in? I must examine him. Fiddlesticks! I haven't seen any of my lodgers ill. I don't believe you. You don't understand. His condition is extremely contagious. I must take him away with me. Yeah, yeah. And if he croaks, I'll pay for his room. He owes me for the month, see? So don't give me all that, or else you'll lose your teeth without being ill. I... I haven't got much money with me, but I can give you what I have. As an advance, of course, and the rest. The rest? Do you think I'm the Queen or something? Get lost! Dear lady, I'm a biographer and also an artist. Your hotel is quite exceptional. I would like to put it on canvas and perhaps write about its history, which I'm sure must be fascinating. If you're drunk, you better go and sober up somewhere else. Dear lady, would you permit me to visit? It would enable me to describe your establishment in the fullest of detail. It's not a museum. And do you think that I look like a curator? I'm looking for one of your tenants. I'll give you something for your trouble, of course. All right. Get your wallet out. I... I haven't got much money with me, but I can give you what I have. As an advance, of course, and the rest. The rest? Do you think I'm the Queen or something? Get lost! You know that I'm tooth, tooth, a p uh, and you know fit. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. I warn you, if you. You're a gr. Ma Are you? I assure you, I have followed your career for years. I have seen nearly all of your fights. Yeah, and you'll be part of the next one if you don't clear off out of my way. I'm looking all right. I the rat Mad Are you You Ma what for? But to immortalize the champion that you are, of course. All the great wrestlers are doing it these days, even pudding, nutcracker, stomping Jenny. Yeah, that's true. If those big cows can have theirs done, why not me? The light here isn't good for artwork. Let me see some of your rooms. Perhaps we will find a better light, without disturbing your tenants, of course. Don't worry about that. Most of them are out this time of day. And if they're not happy about it, I'll explain it to them gently, if you see what I mean. I'm sure that they will understand at once. Yeah, come on then. Here would be perfect. A splendid place. Ah, I've just had a wonderful idea. Why don't I paint your portrait with you wearing your stage costume? What? Yes, I think it would be difficult for me to capture you correctly if you are dressed in your everyday clothes. They are too... elegant. Yeah, all right. I'm going to be great. And it will remind me of the old days. Oh, but I left my costume with a pawnbroker so that I could buy some of that lovely pear-smelling perfume. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Very well, off you go. While I'm waiting, I shall concentrate and soak up the atmosphere here. All right, but don't touch anything. 
The bloke that rents this room isn't very easy going. You'll have enough time. The pawnbroker's shop isn't close by. What a mess. <laughs> That's Holmes all right. <laughs>